Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to asymptotes. So what do we mean by an asymptote? Well, to demonstrate this, I've got this graph here, the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1, all divided by x minus 2. Now, this graph then looks like this, but you'll notice that the curve approaches two lines, the line x equals 2 and the line y equals x. And these are called asymptotes. An asymptote is a line where the curve approaches it but never crosses it. And in this graph then we've just got two asymptotes, one vertical one and one sloping one. Now not all graphs have asymptotes. But in this tutorial, what I'm going to look at is some very simple ones, vertical ones and horizontal ones, not these sloping ones. That's a little bit more advanced. Now we get horizontal and vertical asymptotes when we take, for instance, the graph y equals f of x, which equals 1 over x. You'll notice that the curve approaches the x-axis but never crosses it and it approaches the y-axis and never crosses it. So if we're asked to find the equations then of the asymptotes, then what would they be? So the asymptotes are the x-axis, which has the equation y equals 0, and the y-axis, which has the equation x equals 0. Now if you're not sure why these lines are asymptotes, I will show you this towards the end of the tutorial. But for the time being, let's just work off this particular graph. Suppose we had, for instance, to describe the asymptotes for this curve here, y equals 1 divided by x minus 1 plus 2. What would it look like? Well, we should be familiar with transformations of graphs and the fact that this one is transformed from the graph of y equals 1 over x. If you're unsure of transformations of graphs, do check it out on my website. If we take the graph then of y equals 1 over x, we're going to see then it looks like this, with the asymptotes on the x-axis and the y-axis. But if we replace any x here with x minus 1, this has the effect of translating the graph one unit to the right. So if the y-axis with the equation x equals 0 was an asymptote, then we're now going to get a new asymptote x equals 1 as the graph translates one unit towards the right. Now if we were to add 2, what this does now is it translates the graph up by two units. So the x-axis was an asymptote with equation y equals 0. If we now push the graph up two units, then we get a new asymptote y equals 2. And so the graph will now translate upwards by two units. So it only approaches these two lines but never crosses it. And so we've got two new asymptotes, x equals 1 and y equals 2. Now you always get vertical asymptotes whenever you end up dividing by 0. So you can see that for this one here, x equals 0 is the equation of this vertical asymptote, which happens to be the y-axis. But in this particular curve, if the denominator here is 0, x has to equal 1. And you can see we've got the vertical asymptote here. And it's because of this we're often asked to write down the domain for a particular function. And the domain for this is that you can have any x value except 0. So we say that x can be any real number, except x can never equal 0. Because 1 divided by 0 gives us an undefined 
Y value. As I say, we'll talk more about this in a moment. For this one here, we get a vertical asymptote when we're dividing by zero. And we've seen that it's x equals 1 gives us that denominator of 0. So the domain for this particular graph is that x is any real number, yet it can never equal 1, because that would cause us to divide by 0. So if you're unsure why we're getting these vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, I'll take you through why this is the case. So let's just take a table of values and we're going to look at values of x close to zero. So for this graph here then, let's say that we take just the right hand side of the y-axis, these positive values of x, and in our table let's start with x equaling 1. If x equals 1, then you're going to get 1 divided by 1, which is 1. So let's say we're one unit across here, one unit up, that point there. Let's work our way closer to the y-axis now. Let's say we take x equaling 0 0.5. 1 divided by 0 0.5 goes in twice. So when we go half a unit across, we're two units up. Let's go a little closer to the y-axis. Let's say we take x equaling 0 0.1. 1 divided by 0 0.1 is 10. So even higher. What happens if we take 0 0.01? 1 divided by 0 0.01 is 100. And you can see, I hope, where this is going. If we divide by 0 0.001, we end up with 1,000. So the closer we get to zero, okay, let's just put an arrow here, the closer we get to zero, the larger our values for y get. And in fact, they tend towards infinity. They tend towards plus infinity when we're approaching the y-axis from the right-hand side. Now if we draw up a similar table for the values of x and y, but this time we're looking at the left-hand side of the y-axis, we'll put our values of x and y in here. So if we take, for instance, x equaling minus 1, 1 divided by minus 1 is minus 1. So we're going to be, say, minus 1 unit across, 1 unit down. But as we work our way towards the y-axis, let's say we take minus 0 0.5, we end up with 1 divided by minus 0 0.5 is minus 2. And then minus 0 0.1 gives us minus 10. Minus 0 0.01 gives us minus 100. And minus 0 0.001 gives us minus 1000. So again, can you see what's happening? As we approach zero from the left-hand side now, okay, what happens to our y values? Well, they approach negative infinity. But we never actually get a value for y at these points where x equals zero. And that's why when dividing by zero, we get a vertical asymptote. So how do we now get the horizontal asymptotes? Well, they come about when we consider large positive values and large negative values of x. Let's start with large positive values of x and see what happens. OK, we'll just put this in, large positive values okay, of x. And if we draw up our table, something like we did before, we'll take our x values and y values. And this time, let's say we start looking at x equaling 10, which might be, say, down here somewhere. When x equals 10, you're going to be looking at 1 divided by 10, which is 0 0.1. 
let's go to 100. 1 divided by 100 is 0 0.01. And then 1,000, that's going to be even smaller, 0 0.001. And so what's happening is there's as x gets larger, 1 divided by such a large number tends to 0. So as these numbers increase, then the y values here tend towards 0. They never go negative though. They never go below the x-axis. They approach 0 from what we call the positive side. So let's look what happens when we take large negative numbers. We'll just put an intro here for the table. We're looking at large negative numbers or values okay, of x. And if we draw up our table again for values of x and y, only this time I'll start at this end. We'll start with x equaling minus 10 down here somewhere. So 1 divided by minus 10 gives us minus 0 0.1. And if I divide by minus 100, we're going to get minus 0 0.01. Divide by minus 1,000 and you end up with minus 0 0.001. Our values are getting smaller, but they're staying negative. So as we let our x values become large negative values, tending, in other words, to minus infinity, what happens to our y values? Well, they tend to get smaller and smaller, but stay negative. They approach zero, never reaching zero, but they approach it from below the x-axis. They're negative values. So we write that as zero with a little minus there. And so I hope you can now see that when we took the large positive values of x and the large negative values of x, we approached the line y equals 0, the x-axis in other words. And so that's why that became an asymptote. And if we look at this graph here, when we take large values of x, then similarly this term here tends towards 0. But the values that we get are very close to 0 but positive. And so we end up adding 2. So we get values of y which are just a little bit more than y equals 2. And when we take large negative values of x, going out this way, this particular term tends towards 0, just like this one did, only we end up with very small negative numbers close to 0. And then if we Add 2 to that, it's like doing 2 minus a very small number. So we get a number just less than 2 here. And that's why we get the line y equals 2 then being a horizontal asymptote for this curve. So I hope that's given you a general overview then of asymptotes. And this particular tutorial shows you how we get the vertical asymptotes then whenever we end up dividing a term by zero. And hopefully it also shows you how we get the horizontal asymptotes.